Hey there, friends. It's good to have you with me today. Thanks so much for tuning in to Harmony Hills Home and Garden. We're gardening here in Baltimore, Maryland, Zone 7. And I'm really happy that you've decided to watch this video. Today, I'm going to be taking care of some of these plants that have been neglected, sitting over here in my kind of, this is kind of my wasteland of the garden. I've got things piled up here that I had put in pots and then never took care of last year. And so there are some plants over here that I want to get into the ground today. Let me show you what we have. I've shown this before. This is a tray of hellebores. I believe these are pine knot select variety. I think their flowers will be white. Um, and I, these are volunteers that had come up from the plants that we have over on the north side garden. And I potted up these um, volunteers last year. I put some of them in individual containers like this and they're doing very well. And then I had a lot left over and so I just stuck them in a tray here. Just I put them all in a flat. This is just like directly sewn into this flat of earth. And they lived the whole season like this last year. And um, they look a little bedraggled but that's just because it's the time of year for old hellebore um, foliage to die off and for the new growth of the year like this to come on. So uh, today I'm going to be separating these and planting them out onto our hill. I'm going to be planting these out onto the hill as well. And so then we're going to have some beautiful start of a hellebore garden in the woodland area of our south side hill. I also have over here a few pots of Autumn Joy Sedum. Um, they're probably doing okay here but I, what I'm going to do is clean this up a little bit and take a little bit better care of them same thing with these I might actually pot these on into a bigger pot each um, and just take care of them this year since they are so tenacious they lived through my abuse and neglect last year so I want to reward them with some care and love here I have it looks like seven pots maybe six this one doesn't seem to have anything in it uh, of Lunaria. Lunaria is also called the money plant or honesty, depending on where you live. Um, these are a biennial, so they put out their plant uh, one year and then they put out their flower the next. I think that's how these work. Um, I had seeded these last year and they didn't really do much, so I just kind of stuck them over here and forgot about them. But they have come back and they are determined to grow, so I'm going to put them in the ground also over on the southern uh, hill and just kind of try to um, get them established as a woodland type plant. These put up a nice purple blossom in uh, mid-spring, I would say. And then over the season, their blossoms go to seed and the seed pods are white, uh, papery, round, flat discs. And that's why they're called the money plant. They look like coins. So I'm gonna find a spot to put these Lunaria. I'm gonna pot up these autumn joy sedum and I'm gonna find spots for all of these hellebores. The seedlings that are in those trays and pots were in this bed last year. You can see I have, this is a pine knot select hellebore, two of them, and they put off seeds and that grows into little self-seeded volunteers. These are from last year's seeds. This is from one or two years ago's seeds. And you can see that when they're babies, they don't have all of their leaves yet. They'll get one, two, three, four, five, six or seven leaves per fan when they're mature. But when they're babies, of course, they start out with two. These are just the seedling um, seeds. Uh, they'll get true leaves. I think they'll get two or three true leaves like this one. And then the next year they might put on another stalk that's got four leaves. And over time they grow and they'll eventually put out uh, one, two, three, four, five, you know, a light, a, a large fan of leaves when they're mature. So last year I took these seedlings, I took the ones that were about this size, two or three or four true leaves, and I planted them in that tray and in those pots, and I stored them and watered them most of the summer. Not all the summer, though, they did get neglected. So you can see here I have hundreds and hundreds of little tiny baby hellebore seedlings, and so uh, I'll be able to plant hellebores around my property 
in perpetuity forever if I wanted to. Or I could leave these here and it would grow into a nice ground cover. And the competition amongst these seedlings, they would have the survival of the fittest and I would get a nice mat of hellebores along here if I let them go. But I probably won't because this is a perennial shade bed that I have and I don't really need all that many hellebores in here. I have a few choices for where I could put the Lunaria and the Hellebores. Um, I have this south side hill that faces the street um, and it's quite a drop in elevation from up here on the side yard to down at the sidewalk level. So I'm going to show you a little bit of the choices I have and, um, and we'll make some decisions about where these plants are going to go. So here I am on the side of the driveway. Let me turn around slowly. There's our working area. There's our trash bins and our compost bins and piles of brush. This is the stuff I pruned the other day and I haven't taken care of. And so our driveway goes down this hill and around a corner and then down to the street level. And then along this street, we have a sidewalk down at street level. Uh, but we're about, I would say, 10 or 15 feet in elevation above the sidewalk. And so we have some choices. Um, someone in this house's past built a stone retaining wall right here and uh, I have tried to plant things in here um, without success because I don't have any water run down here and it's really difficult to bring the hose over here and remember really to water so I have in the past had rhododendrons in there they got eaten by deer and they got dried out and then I've tried hostas down in there they get eaten by deer too but I think this might be a nice place to put a big stand of hellebores right in this little bed right there someone in the past also built these very crazy retaining walls here they look like snowball forts to me for the kids um, the owner who put this in lived here from i think 1973 to 19 or maybe 19 lived here for 35 years starting in 1973 so that brings you up to what 2000 two something like that my, my math is correct so this is just old concrete and stones they found inside the soil and just a hodgepodge of different kinds of stony materials that he's built this um, little thing with and I really don't know why he did it but other than just to kind of level off the yard and give a little bit more area to stand but it's kind of a mess down here someone in the past has had a fence and so we still have fence poles down there and then there's some just um, it's not even it's not even as big as um, chicken wire there's there is some wire fencing I don't know if, if maybe I'll try to zoom in on it yeah it's that big four inch square wire panel right there and it runs across these uh, really old fence posts and we've been just kind of tossing yard waste down here. It's not stable. You wouldn't want to walk across there, although my husband does all the time. But it's just held in place with that wire um, fence. So I think maybe if I, last year I tried to plant some, what is it, lamb's ears down this hill. And I don't think many of them took, maybe one or two of them, but I don't see any of them coming out. It's too shady, probably. So maybe some hellebores across here to kind of maybe beautify this spot. Or down on this end, standing down here on this uh, retaining wall. Maybe down here on the sidewalk side, you can see this kind of, it's called a fedge. It's a fence hedge you just put yard waste in. Plus, I think somebody had a dinner plate in there. What is that? I'm going to get that out of there. Um, anyway, we had a tree taken out here. The stump got removed. Um, so we could put some hellebores along here. We do have daffodils. We've got periwinkle. Think of minor. It's blooming. Oh, yeah, it's blooming. So maybe some hellebores along this area here. Or uh, maybe some new shrubs. Um, woodland style shrubs. I'm not quite sure. So that's an option. Let's see. If we turn this way and come over on this side toward the driveway. So we have this whole hill along here. Um, so this is a stand of forsythias that are really old and don't get, don't get enough sun. So they are scraggly. So over time, I think we'll take those out and replace them with something that is more shade loving. It gets full sun in the winter, but in the summer is full shade. 
because of the tree cover that's above them. Um, along the sidewalk down on this hill, I have, uh, what is it called? Spiderwort, the native Tradescantia, I think is how you say it, Trad Tradescantia. I'm not sure how to say it, but it's spiderwort. And I have some clumps of spiderwort along here, but I would love to add some more things to beautify that area. So maybe some Lunaria down in there and maybe some Hellebores down in there. Also, here's a spot uh, at the top of the hill in the kind of the woodland area. This is mock orange. And, um, and then there's this area here above this crazy retaining wall. So it could get some hellebores here as well. Lots of choices for spots. Let's come up this way. I really need to get these branches trimmed up and added to the pile. I had tried to plant a stand of yellow twig dogwood in here a few years ago, but the deer ate them to the ground. All right, over here on this hill, this is where the driveway comes down and around the corner. And this is a really um, hilly slope. It goes from where I'm standing down to the street. It's probably, I think it's probably a, t a 15 foot elevation drop down this slope. So we have some wild strawberries in here. We have a, a stand of wild onions that the birds keep bringing us more and more and more. And then there are some little shrubby things in here. Um, I don't know what they are, and they just look scraggly, so over time we've been taking those out as well. But I think along this stand, wouldn't it be nice to have like this swath of hellebores kind of going um, down this hill, so that as you come up the driveway, driving on the driver's side, you would see along this hill, you'd see some native kind of hellebore. I know the hellebores I have aren't native, but they do reseed themselves, so it would turn into a nice ground covery mat of hellebores back in there. So that's a thought. And then also I could put some down for pedestrians to enjoy down in this area. Hey, I just saw something. It's the first daffodils of the season. Let's go check them out. Looky here. <gasps> Hello, babies. Good morning. Happy spring. Oh, what a happy sight. Given all the choices that I have that I just showed you, I think I'm going to put the Lunaria in this um, woodland area up amongst these trees, up on this side of the hill so that we can enjoy them. They have beautiful purple flowers. Um, as they self seed and grow into a recurring clump, maybe we'll get some plants that I end up transplanting down the hill for pedestrians to enjoy. But for the, this year, I wanna have them up here where I can see them more often. And then the hellebore, I've decided I'm not going to put any down here on this retaining wall. I'm going to put them in a swath up the driveway. And I think that that'll be a really nice start to a woodland garden on that hill over there. I've got my materials out. I'm just going to put these in the ground because these are woodland native plants in our area. Um, I'm not going to treat them too well. I'm just going to put them into the native soil. I might throw a tiny little teaspoon of biotone starter in there, but I might not even do that because they really are a native plant in our area and they should be able to handle whatever soil we've got going on. I see them around in our neighbor's yards under trees and under shrubs and things like that. And so I think they'll do well here too without too much coddling. going really well, really easy to get these into the ground. The soil over here is basically woodland soil. It's got lots and lots of leaf mold that's been there over the years and years and years. So 
pretty easy to dig in there except for the occasional tree root, but I wanted to show you up close, so here we go. I had brought my big new spade over here in case the soil was difficult to shovel, but it's pretty darn easy. You see there's some tree roots at the surface here. Those are probably uh, from this shrub that's over there. It's hard to tell, but I'm trying to find a spot where I can nestle this root ball in without cutting any tree roots. So I'm scooting on my hole over this side a little bit. Okay, so then I just put this in here. I'm just putting this down in the soil, covering it back over. Pretty easy peasy, pretty typical way to plant. And then I am putting markers beside each plant over here because that's my signal to my husband that these are here on purpose and don't weed them. So when he sees these white markers, he knows don't pull the plant out. That is a lot of hellebores. I didn't count them. There's definitely over 20, maybe 30. I don't know. Um, and so these are all going to get planted on this hill. I put the seven up there that were bigger in the four inch pots. Again, you can't really see them up in there, but like there's one. And there's one. It's really hard to see. But anyway, so these other ones are going to come down and form a drift going this way. And, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be great. I put 30 of these little teeny tiny baby hellebore starts on this hill, starting roughly up at the bushes up there and kind of coming down in kind of a... Um, just a gentle swath like that. I have 12 more, so that's 42 of these baby seedlings, plus the seven that were up the hill. So what's that, 49 baby hellebores going into the ground today. So these 12, um, I think I'm gonna put them down along the sidewalk so that our pedestrian neighbors can enjoy them too. Well, I was gonna film myself planting on this side hill, but apparently I don't know how to operate my camera. I keep doing this. Yesterday I did it too. I pushed what I thought was record. It wasn't recording. I need to double, triple check every time I hit that record button, make sure I'm doing the right thing. Anyway, you've seen me plant stuff. You didn't need to see me plant over here. Let me just show you what I've got. Okay, we're on the side hill. There's the house up there. There's the compost bin where I was earlier. And over there is where I was on the driveway. And I planted, uh, what did I say? 30 of the little teeny tiny hellebores over here on this hill, kind of on the other side of those wild onion patch and in those leaves down toward the driveway and then up the driveway a little bit. And then I had 12 left over. So I've put them down here. Can't really see, except I think you can see the dark brown spots where I've disturbed the soil to put them in. But otherwise, um, this hill is really not uh, very well kept. It's got um, English ivy growing on it up the hill there and then vinca also. You can kind of see the purple flowers of the vinca are out so that's really nice. But um, this bottom side of it uh, we have some soil erosion going on. Um, there were a bunch of wild raspberries in here and we've been digging those out and that has disturbed the soil and then um, so we've lost some of our ground cover that um, was holding the soil in. Anyway, so here are where I put in the little um, baby hellebores. Everywhere you see the soil has been disturbed. Put a dozen of them in here, kind of, kind of like this. I think I went up a little bit right there. So 
this is a long game. These are going to take a couple of years to really get established, but once they do, it'll be really nice. And I've put them right next door to where I have my stand of um, spiderwort. And the spiderwort's just popping out for the spring. Um, I've got, I think, seven or eight clumps of it all through here. Um, starting right there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, maybe a dozen clumps of spiderwort over here. And that'll be growing up over the next couple of weeks. And then next door to it will be this clump of hellebores. And so I think that that'll be a nice start. So like I said, this is a long game. These plants and those up on the hill are not going to be anything to look at for another couple of years. Each of them has at least one main leaf from last year and at least one new sprout for this year. Some of them have three or four leaves from last year and two or three sprouts this year and they're gonna be a little further along. But I don't expect any of these to flower probably not for two or three years. They really need to establish themselves and get themselves settled in. We're due for rain later today, so I'm not gonna water these in, but if we don't get any rain or we don't get appreciable rain today, I will come out with a watering can and just give them a little bit of soil because some of the spots that I planted in, the soil was really dry. So, um, but hellebores, um, they're pretty resilient. I think they can withstand dry shade or I wouldn't have tried to put them here, so. Um, so if you've been following along for any length of time, you may have noticed that I like to do things with what I have. I'm kind of a thrifty person when it comes to expanding and growing my garden. I mean, I do invest in things when it's worth the investment, but as far as, you know, filling out a half acre of um, a property, half acre is a lot, and it would cost so much money to buy the plants that I really envision in my mind for this property. So. Um, I'm trying to do it the thrifty way. I'm trying to do it the long view way. Okay, so take your volunteer seedlings from around your plants and put them out elsewhere in your yard and expand your gardens in that way. It really helps. Saving seeds and growing from seed, that really helps too. And taking cuttings, rooting cuttings, dividing your plants, all of these ways of propagating and giving yourself new plants for no cost or low cost. Um, that's a really great way to populate your garden. And like I said, this is going to take a few years before this is really established but I've got nothing but time at least as far as I know and gardening is one of those things that just you know you have to be a hopeful person and an optimistic person in order to be a gardener so that's my theory around here anyway as I was looking at these little hellebore babies I noticed that this flower is creamy white with green but this flower has got some pink on it and I didn't realize that these are two different kinds of plants this one is Pine Knot Select. This one back here is Pink Frost. But I thought this was Pine Knot Select as well, but I dug around and I found its tag and it turns out this is Brandywine. So I didn't realize it. So some of the seedlings that I just planted out may be Brandywine instead of Pine Knot Select. So that'll be nice. We'll have a nice random mixture of these two types of hellebores out in the yard.
All right, I was able to get 12 Autumn Joy sedums out of these little cells. Those had been volunteers in the garden last year that I put into those cells to grow on. And then I forgot about them and they lived over the winter and came back up. So 12 of them from here. And then there were two in a three inch pot. Um, so I bumped those 12 up into these four inch pots. And then these two are the ones that had been in the three inch and now they're in a four inch pot as well. So I will water these in. The potting soil that these are in is just the Lowe's brand Stay Green Potting Soil Plus Fertilizer. Um, I did find one mini pearl phlox that survived in this tray. I had taken a bunch of cuttings off of my mini pearl to see if that would be a good way to propagate them. It really wasn't. Only a couple of them survived the summer and of those, only one of them survived the winter. So the, I'll, I'll go ahead and grow her on. But to divide and propagate mini pearl flocks, it's best to just do it by root division. Uh, I think that's the most efficient way. So I'm gonna get these down onto the driveway and uh, we'll, uh, let them grow on up and um, I won't be able to place all of these in my garden because I don't have any place where the deer wouldn't munch on them. Um, so I'll probably keep a few of them, but the rest of them I'll probably give away to friends and neighbors. So that was a good morning's work. A couple hours out in the yard. Um, the sun has come out, which is nice, but I do think we are still planning to get some rain later in the afternoon. Um, if we don't get rain, I'll come out and water all these things that I uh, planted in the ground today. But I think we will get rain. I've put the uh, sedum down here on this driveway and they can live right there until they grow on and get a little bit bigger and then I'll give them away to friends. Um, and then around this way, back in here and down the hill is where I've put the six Lunaria and 49 hellebore babies. So it's a good project and it, it really does say that you can take plants that come into your yard for free as volunteers and put them out and they'll do great. So at least I hope they'll do great. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you enjoyed what you saw. I hope you learned a little bit about propagating hellebores and maybe um, potting up sedums and um, <clears throat> If you like the video, go ahead and hit that like button down there, and I'd love it if you would subscribe and follow along with me in my garden adventures over the coming summer. Um, I'm Jenny, I'm here in Baltimore in Zone 7, and I'd love to have you come along for the ride. Have a great day, friends. Thanks so much for joining.